So every once in a while, a product comes through these doors and into this listening room that absolutely surprises me. Uh, one such piece is the name Supernate 3, and I guess in reality it shouldn't have surprised me. Many, many years ago when I lived in Arizona, there was a store back then called, I think it was called the Audio Nut or Audio Nuts, and it was ran by a guy who was really passionate about audio. So much so, he opened up his own shop and he became a dealer for certain brands. And the first time I walked in there, he didn't know me at all. And he let me take home a pair of $1,500 cables to try out. I didn't have to sign anything, nothing like that. Uh, great guy. I brought him back. I didn't buy him. I couldn't afford it at the time, but he wanted me to hear the difference. Um, and he was a dealer for name. And I remember he had the original Supernate integrated amplifier set up with some little speakers. And he said, did you ever hear name? Did you Have you ever heard name? And I said, no, but I've seen them. I'm familiar with the brand, but I've never heard one. And he walked me over to his setup and he put on some music. I think it was some kind of jazz. And it sounded very unique. It sounded very musical. And what struck me about it was its palpability, right? its um, energy, it had a body to it, like I didn't remember other amps having. As a matter of fact, at the time, my system at home, I believe, was a Carry SLP98P, and I had some 805C monoblocks, and that, for me, was like, I went crazy and, and spent so much money, and uh, I heard this name, and I was like, that sounds nicer than what I have at home. And he's like, oh yeah, and then he showed me a couple of other pieces and that left a lasting memory on me. I remembered that day, I still remember that day and sadly um, the guy who ran the shop, uh, he had an accident at the Grand Canyon, he fell off a cliff and he passed away and therefore the shop was closed and there were no more name dealers at the time uh, anywhere near me so I was never able to really bring one home or hear it. Uh, the Supernate 2 came out not so long ago, or many years ago, I should say, and it lasted, uh, it was in the lineup for a long time, many, many years, and I did get a chance to hear one of those. And again, I was struck by the same kind of sound, kind of bassy in the mids and the low end, and it really filled out the music. It made everything sound really musical, and the treble was sweet. It wasn't the most wide open sound I heard, but it sounded very pleasing. When the Supernate 3 came out, the newest uh, model from Name, in it's their top end integrated, uh, I looked at it very long and closely, and I really wanted to hear one. But at the time, I wasn't buying hi-fi gear, I had my system, I spent enough money on it, and uh, again, there were no dealers close by that would allow me to bring it home and hear it. But lo and behold, I've been able to listen to the name Supernate 3, courtesy of the Music Room. Now, the Music Room is a place where you can browse so many products. They sell used products that they vet, they check out, they make sure everything's working, they photograph it, they list it on the site, and in some cases, you can save almost 50% on some really cool hi-fi pieces. I check the Music Room at least twice a week because they add something like 15 to 20 new products a day in the used section. You can find products from Audio Research, Pass Lab, Sonus Faber, all the big names and even some of the unknown names. Very cool. But the Music Room is also a dealer for new lines and new products. And one of those products that they are a dealer for is Name. So they asked me if I wanted to check out the Supernate 3. They sent it along and uh, they also sent along a Hi-Fi Rose uh, RA-180 integrated amp. And in case I wanted to compare them. And so I placed in the Supernate 3. I was very, very curious if I was going to have that same memory of sound that I had from way back when, when I first heard that integrated amplifier. I hooked it up to my uh, Fleetwood DeVille's, I'm running a DCS Lena DAC and clock, and I sat down and I queued up some familiar music to stream, 
and lo and behold there was that familiar sound right it had a density to it that's the word i'm looking for it's dense it's uh kind of a little thick in the mid band and the bass is really big but it's controlled and it's tuneful and the high end is not over exaggerated but it's it's there it's present it's airy it's a little crisp and therefore it brings everything to life and it's a very expansive sound but it's not a, a super transparent sound right so some high-end gear is so transparent it's like looking through a windowless window like you're just looking right into the music and sometimes that's really cool that allows you to hear all these micro and macro details floating in space and it can be fun but sometimes uh, that gets a little bit um, you know hard on the ears after a couple hours of listening sometimes those kind of systems uh, tend to be brighter in the treble and that's when we start to get listening fatigue um, I like that kind of sound I love that see-through kind of magical float in the air thing it's a really cool thing to experience but is that really what real music is supposed to sound like when I was a kid None of my music sounded like that. And uh, a lot of people who listen to a high-end system like that for the first time don't like it. They think it sounds thin or bright or not natural. And some people love that extra detail. With the name, with the Supernate 3, you get a little bit of that. It is holographic. It does have a nice soundstage, but the soundstage doesn't, it's not cavernous, right? It's more natural. The high-end is is very sweet and silky and it's it's not overdone you it does image nicely but it images naturally and the mid bass is plump so there's real body to the music much more so than even my past labs xa 60.8 amps that have been here for a year year and a half now i always use the past labs as the reference for the sound i love that big a little bit warm transparent to some degree holographic and reach out and touch you with a velvet hug kind of sound i like that kind of sound to me that's human uh, it brings out emotion right uh, the name is even more dense and more bassy than the past labs and what this does is no matter what music i'm playing through the super n 3 it sounds musical it sounds pleasing it sounds pleasant nothing ever sounds thin or ragged and because the treble in the uh, supernate 3 is extended somewhat you don't have you never get that dull sound some amps can sound dull like they have no energy or power they're too warm this amp has balls it has power it sounds huge and it almost seems like it has more power than it actually has this is 80 watts per channel into 8 ohms and 130, I believe, into 4 ohms. But man, I don't have to turn the volume up much to get really big sound from the DeVille. So there's a couple of other things I want to say about the name Supernate 3. And I'll make this quick and we'll get on to the review. Drums sound phenomenal with this integrated amplifier. They have impact. They have drive. In fact, I haven't heard drums sound better with any other integrated amp. This amp excels with dynamic range, that transition from loud to soft, right? It does that extremely well. If you're listening to a piano piece and the player hits the key softly, you can hear that soft hit. If the player jams on those keys, you can hear that impact. This amp is fantastic at this at doing this dynamic range thing there is something to that name sounds so i placed in the bucard s400 mark ii's same thing that made them sound bigger more full of life and energy and my feet were tapping which name is known for name is known for a specific sound right pratt i think it's pacing rhythm and timing if, correct me if i'm wrong that's what i always thought it meant but it gets your feet tapping. But Name also excels at bringing um, that humanity to the music. It is a sound that it can reach your heart and soul. It's it's not thin. It's not. It doesn't go to extremes to wow you. But you sit there and you listen. And I was listening, and I was saying this is what music is supposed to sound like. The name Supernate Three has that texture 
Uh, it does the layers. It does the sweetness, right? The vocals are dead center in the image and they come out a little bit and they're big and they're lifelike. All coming from this little thin integrated amplifier. Now the amp to me looks very classy, a little bit understated. The green doesn't come out at you like a flashlight. It's very calm. It just looks really, really good. And it's pretty heavy too, way heavier than I thought it was. Of course, it doesn't have a built-in DAC. It doesn't have any digital inputs, which I personally like. It's an all analog amp with a big old massive toroidal transformer, which I believe is what delivers this really special magical sound. It's really special, guys. Now, this amp does have a built-in phono stage, and usually phono stages in integrated amps are kinda okay to average. Some are very good. The one in the Luxman is very good. I remember a Yamaha S3000 had a pretty decent phono stage in it, but a lot of them sound thin, they lack life, they lack that density, uh, and it, it makes you not wanna listen to records sometimes, or you have to spend more money on an external phono preamp. I hooked up my turntable just in an expensive Fluence that cost 500 bucks. It came with an Ortofon Blue cartridge. I hooked that up to the phono stage in the Supernate 3, which is only a moving magnet phono stage. So it doesn't have moving coils, so you are limited there. But holy wow, my records had that same density, that same bigness, that same sparkly treble coming from a built-in phono stage using a $500 full total package turntable. It was sounding much better than it had a right to sound. I could not believe it. Now, the preamp stage in the Supernate 3 is class A, and I think that delivers some of the magic, and it doesn't run hot. Actually, it's been on since I installed it, and it's still pretty cool to the touch. It doesn't cost much to run. Name recommends leaving it on 24-7, and I would say unless there's a big thunderstorm coming, then you'd want to unplug it from the wall. Now, I'm not using anything fancy with it. It's the stock power cord. I am using Cardus RCA cables from the DAC into the uh, integrated, as well as the turntable. I'm using Cardus uh, clear reflection cables going into the integrated from the turntable. So all in all, this has been an amazing experience with the name Supernate 3. I'll talk about some comparisons. Compared to the Enlium Amp 23 that I also really, really love, uh, it's a complete different sound signature. The Enlium is small, it's tiny, it runs red hot, but it doesn't heat the room because it's so small. It's a basic two input RCA only amp, but the Enlium is a brighter amp. It's kind of got that lit from within sound. It has an energy about it. It has that expansive sound stage and imaging and treble and it's a very exciting listen the enlium has a big bottom end as well but the mid-range is not as dense or beefy it's a little thinner uh, and a little more recessed but the enlium is also an amazing amp for speakers or headphones compared to the supernate 2 that i remember this is going from memory and this was in a complete different system speakers deck everything so it's really not even worth mentioning but it does seem like the Supernate 3 is a little more airy, a little more holographic, and a little more sweeter. Not as, it's a little more lively, but it's not really something I would call a lively amp. So it depends on the sound you like. I don't think it's a major difference, but the phono stage inside the Supernate is actually quite fantastic. Now, there are a couple of things that make me scratch my head in the design, things that are negatives to me, though they're not deal breakers. So let's take a closer look at the Supernate 3. On the front you have your volume dial right here. The lights light up to let you know so you can see in the dark. They're not overdone or over bright, which is very nice. But here is one of the cons, the balance control. There's no click stop in the middle. So you never know when you're exactly in that middle position, which means you know, you might have a little bit more signal to the right or left if you don't get that spot on. I don't know why they didn't put a click stop there so you know you're in the center. There is a Class A headphone amplification section here. Plug in your headphones. And by the way, the volume control uses an Alps Blue Velvet volume control. Very, very nice. Um, you also have, with the name Supernate 3, your inputs. There's a mute button. 
right? You have your CD, you have your tuner input, the stream input, which is what I'm using with the Lena DAC and the Lena clock. Um, and you also have your phono stage and an auxiliary input as well. So the inputs are pretty substantial here with the Supernate, but check out this weirdness in the back. This is a con that I don't understand. Uh, usually when you have an amp, uh, your right connector for the speaker goes to the right and your left goes to the left. But here you see my cables are crossed because Name has put the right speaker connector on the left and the left on the right. It's very, very strange indeed. This means you have to cross your speaker cables over one another and I really don't understand this design choice. It's, it's an odd, odd thing to see. I've never seen it before on any integrated amp. I thought I had a one-off oddball defect, but no, they're all like this. You can also use bananas uh, into the connectors. Name says as long as they don't touch each other, as in the bare wire, you are good to go. There should be not a problem. You have uh, the inputs here. This is my phono input. I'm using Cardus Clear Reflection Cables and there are the DIN inputs uh, for other name equipment on the back. Uh, none of these are deal breakers for me because the sound and appearance is just so cool. Because I love and adore the looks and the sound of this and the price is actually beautiful for what you're getting, it comes in at something like uh, mid 50, 5500, 5600, something like that. It's under 6000 and uh, I've heard amps that cost 10,000, 12,000, 15,000 integrated that didn't sound to me, to my taste, as good as the Supernate 3. So the other day I made a post to the community page of my YouTube channel and I showed a picture of the name Supernate 3 and the Hi-Fi Rose RA180. Now, I really am enjoying both of these amps. And I said in that post, one of these will be staying with me, one of them will be sent back. Now, I wanna tell you guys which one I chose. The Hi-Fi Rose is definitely unique. It has that Nagra look, that vibe. It has a more transparent sound, a little more open uh, than the name. Um, a more audiophile sound, I should say. But at the same time, it's a little flatter in the sound stage, right? The name has that beefiness, that drum kick, the piano weight, the dynamic range. Matter of fact, I've never heard any integrated sound as good as the Supernate 3 in my system, but it's basic. It has some quirks, right? It doesn't have all the features or the style of the Hi-Fi Rose. They both sound phenomenal, but for me, I am going to purchase and keep the name Supernate 3 because the sound quality, because the history of the company. I think they've been around since 1973, right? Hi-Fi Rose is a brand new company uh, out of South Korea and their 150B streamer is highly recommended by me, amazing buy. The um, RA180, as I said, is a fabulous integrated amp if you like that kind of sound and presentation and if you like the looks i suspect many will love the rose amp uh, my review is coming soon where i'll talk more about it but i could not pass up the supernate 3 i've never heard an integrated amp sound quite like it it delivers music with flesh and blood behind it and uh, it's just a beautiful piece so that's the one i chose uh, I thank you all for watching. I love you all, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Hey, muscles.